Hi Oceanography students. This video and the next several videos will give you the information you need to answer the questions on the pre-lab exercise. So to get started, let's think of some about some simple wave measurements. Wave height is the vertical distance from the trough of the wave to the crest. Wave length is the horizontal distance between two successive crests. And then wave period is the time between successive wave crests, which we measure in seconds. And that's an important number. We're going to come back to that. Most of the waves that you see surfers riding and see breaking here on the beach are formed by storms far out at sea somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. And those waves have traveled from that storm often for several days before they get to our coastline. A storm is like a wave factory. As, it puts, as the wind of the storm puts more energy into the ocean, it changes the waves in very specific ways. And in fact, there's a very um, clear relationship here between the amount of energy the storm puts into the waves, shown by the arrow increasing to the right, and the wave period, wavelength, and speed. You see how the wave period, wavelength, and wave speed, all these numbers increase, get bigger, the more energy the storm puts into the ocean. And it turns out that the relationship between the period, the wavelength, and the speed is quite precise. And we can, that's useful to us because we can use any one of those variables to predict the other two. This is if you're dealing with deep water waves, waves out in water deeper than their wave base that are moving independently of the ocean floor. So for example, if you have a deep water swell with an eight second period, that translates to a wavelength of 100 meters or about 330 feet and a speed of about 12 or 13 meters per second, or say, you know, maybe 40 feet per second. Versus if you had a longer period wave, 13 seconds, that translates to a longer wavelength, about 260 meters, and a speed of about 20 meters per second. So the longer the period, the longer the wavelength, and the faster the waves travel. This is really useful because it lets us predict what the waves are going to, how fast the waves are going to get here, and what they're going to do when they when they do get here. Now, in a storm, it's a big chaotic mess of many different waves as the storm blows at different speeds and for different amounts of time, and all of those waves are trying to leave the storm and move away from the storm, but they don't all move away at the same speed. The faster waves with the longer wavelengths and the longer periods are going to move out ahead of the slower waves. And a good analogy here would be to imagine cars at a stoplight. When the light turns green, the faster cars are going to move out ahead of the slower cars. And so if you go down the road a ways, the cars are all going to be separated. And we call that process dispersion, the separation of waves according to their speed as they leave a storm. And so if you let the waves travel away from a storm, the ocean looks really different. It ends up looking like this, with a, very, a set of very evenly spaced waves, all with the same wavelength and the same period, traveling at the same speed. And that process is called dispersion. Dispersion of waves at different speeds from a storm creates what we call swells, which are sets of evenly spaced waves that are all traveling together. When those swells arrive on our coastline, that's when surf is up. And those nice evenly spaced swells that come in one behind the other very predictably according to their periods are what create the big surfing waves that we get on our coastline. Now the whole reason we can predict when and where these swells are going to arrive and how big they're going to be has to do with sensor buoys that are deployed off of our coastline. And one of the more important sets of buoys is, spon is sponsored by the Coastal Data Information Program at Scripps Inst Institution of Oceanography. CDIP for short, Coastal Data Information Program. And you can see one of these buoys here. It's about the size of a big beach ball filled with about a million dollars worth of equipment. You can see a CDIP and UCSD, that's um, University of California, San Diego, which is part of uh, where Scripps is, um, belongs to. And then there's a, a radio antenna here, which sends information about the waves up to a satellite that then beams that information down to the computers at Scripps. There are uh, more than a dozen of these CDIP buoys deployed along our coastline all the way from the Mexican border up to north of Point Conception, which is this bend in the coastline where if you head north from there, you're heading towards San Francisco and the coast base is mostly west. Okay, I've given you enough information here to answer some of the questions in your pre-lab. Go ahead and do that and then go on to the next video where we're going to look at the wave models produced by these CDIP buoys.